Hello everyone and welcome to part 1 of how to make a top down shooter in superpowers. Today we're going to go over moving the player around in our game. So the first things first, we're going to need our player model. I have mine right here. It's just a 10x10 10 10 block, as you can see. And we're going to go over here and we're going to create a scene. Now let's call this game. And then what we're going to do is come over here, create an actor. Let's call this the player and add a component, which will be our cubic model render. And what this does is it displays the model that we made inside of this actor. So we just put the name of our actor and of our player model and there it is inside of our game. And then we're also going to need a camera. I'm just going to name it cam and what that needs is a camera component. So add a component, select camera and hit create. And then just move your camera around a little bit. I'm going to make this R0, 5, and negative 10. Oh wait, no, 10. Just so that it's a little bit behind our actor. And we're going to rotate it to look kind of down to make it more top-down-ish. There. And then, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to tell the game to run this scene when it starts. So you're going to go into settings down here, go to startup scene, and type game, or the name of your scene. Now it says that it's the startup scene. So we're going to go ahead and run the game. And it's going to load. And there's a box and with the completely black background. So there we go. Now, what we're going to do to control it is we're going to create a script. Let's just call this player controller. Controller. <laughs> I cannot spell. Controller. Alright. Now, this may be the part where it looks scary, but I assure you, everything we are about to do is very, very simple. Now, what this awake is, is what's inside of these two brackets. As I click, you see they light up green. And whatever, whatever's inside here, whatever's inside here, it's showing up red because it's an error is all the things you're going to initialize. So you're going to basically um, basically show what represents what. So this, so if I type um, player, it'll equal this actor or whatever. And that's what's going to happen when it first starts up. Now the update is what will be checked every 60 seconds or 60 times a second not every 60 seconds what's in here will be checked 60 times a second so let's put that checks 60 times a second and then what's in here will be checked at the beginning at the beginning of the game and when I put these two symbols whatever I put next to it won't actually be checked up or won't actually 
be in the script. It'll just go right. It'll just pass by. And that's why we're not getting any errors. So what we're going to put in here is um, what we're going to do is we're going to check for and we're going to check to see if the player hits a button. So we're going to do if it's basically like talking. So if I want to see if the player puts the key, I don't know, W down, we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to hit shift nine and create the bracket. And we're going to do sup. This is also pretty easy because of TypeScript. So basically, if it sees you trying to type something, it'll pop up down here what you may be looking for. Very, very handy. So we're going to do sup dot input dot is key down. And then we're going to create another one and say w. Then we're going to also have to create another set of brackets brackets, so that whenever this key is down, it'll check whatever's in these brackets, and it'll do that 60 times a second. So we have this, which is being checked. Whatever's in here is going to be checked inside of here which is checked every 60 seconds so it's kind of like a folder system this is one folder whatever you put in this folder will be confined to these this pair of brackets like that so we're gonna do what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this dot actor dot move then we're going to go ahead and put where we want it to move along which axis. So let's say we want it to move along the Z axis. So we're going to do 0x, 0y, but we're going to do point 0 0.01 for the Z and then we're gonna go ahead and put that there it's kind of like a period to the end of your sentences but for code and then we're gonna go ahead and hit apply changes then we're gonna go ahead and attach this to our player and then, so we're going to go into the scene, we're going to add, we're going to select our player, click new component, and then we're going to add a behavior, class player controller behavior, which is the script that we just made. So when we run it, when we run the game, Now I'm clicking W and it's moving forward. And it eventually moves out of the screen. But what we saw was instead of moving forward this way, it moved backwards this way. So we're going to go ahead and very easy fix. We're just going to hit negative 0 0.1. Now we're going to make it move in other directions instead of just forwards. So let's go ahead and do if sub dot input, same as last time, is key down. And for those of you watching, try not to copy and paste this and then just paste it again down here and just change. We're going to change this task. And then just change that because it really doesn't help you learn what you're going to need to learn to be able to do this on yourself and to know what you're doing.
because this is a learning experience. So we're going to do this dot actor dot move zero 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 point zero one, and you're going to want to make whatever it's whatever the speed is pretty small because it's going to be doing it 60 times a second. So we're going to save and run the game. Now I'm pressing W, S, W, S, W, S. Now we also want to move left and right too, so we're going to do if sup dot input dot is key down D. Another set of brackets. And then we want it to move, we want our player to move along the X axis. So we're going to go ahead and do this dot actor dot move 0 0.01 0 0 period we're not in an actual period but the code period this little thing it'll be two two keys to the left of your enter we're going to go ahead and save. And run the game. Now you can see, whenever I press D, we're moving to the left, or to the right. Now, we're going to go ahead and make a move left. So if, so dot input dot is key down a another set of brackets this dot actor dot move this should all be getting very familiar zero or negative zero point zero one zero on the y and 0 on the X. Then the code period. Now I don't know if you guys noticed, but our character was moving pretty slow. Now we could go and change how much it's being moved. And by into every single key but we're gonna be balancing this game a lot and we're gonna be changing this a lot when balancing and modifying it and doing all this other stuff so what we can do is we're gonna go up here and do speed equals 0 0.2 and then period and then we're gonna get rid of we're gonna go inside every single input dot is key down and we're gonna get rid of the movement and we're gonna and instead we're gonna put this dot speed now this was in negative so we're gonna go ahead and put negative this dot speed and we're gonna do that for every single one We're going to go ahead and save that, and we're going to run the game. And now our cube is moving, ooh, <laughs> I forgot to put a negative here, and now our cube
is moving fast or a lot faster. So yeah guys, there's the movable cube, and this is going to be the end of part 1. You can see when I press W, I'm going up, S, I'm going down, A to the left, and D to the right. Thank you guys for watching, and have a nice day, and stay tuned for the next tutorial.